there, Debbie here. And welcome to my tiny homes here at Luxony Tiny Home Community. I'm sitting in my condo in San Diego and COVID happens and all of a sudden 200 families are all in just staying home in the community and I was feeling very claustrophobic and I'd been feeling the mountains calling to me for a while. So I said, I gotta get out of here. I just gotta get out of here. I have a friend who has a tiny home village and so why don't I just drive about an hour and a half away and I'll check it out. Get into the mountains, get away. Crazy thinking this has only been about two years, but that changed the complete trajectory of my life. I said, I'm selling my condo. Then within a month's time, my condo was sold. All of my belongings were put into storage because I was gonna try out tiny home living for a longer period of time. Make sure it was something I could really do. First of all, could I live that simply? Could I, I, could I really go and even further uh, eliminate a lot of my belongings? And that was a yes. And then I learned a lot of other things about what I didn't want and what I did want and decided to make the leap and buy my first tiny home, lily pad. And then within less than two months, I had my new tiny home here in Lakeside, Arizona. So here is Casa del Sol. She is 10 by 36, 360 square feet. Here is my guest house, La Casita, and she's 12 by 12, 144 square feet. And here's my first tiny home, Lily Pad. She's 270 square feet plus two lofts. So some of the outdoor features that I love about my little tiny home area is I'm a dog lover. I have a Shiba Inu and I wanted her to have a place to go outside of the tiny homes because tiny homes are smaller inside, right? So part of tiny home living is having outdoor space to enjoy and I wanted my doggy to have space to enjoy too. I did a dog kennel for her so she would have a place where she could go and just enjoy outdoors more and expand her space. Then when I built Casa del Sol and La Casita I wanted a large deck again for me and also for my guests and for dogs because I love dogs. <laughs> Let me show you around. So here is my adjoined deck for the tiny home and La Casita. It's a 12 by 16 deck. I wanted a large deck space so that we could have a barbecue. I'll bring that out after winter. Uh, we have six chairs actually right now. We put some of them away because of winter for storage, but six chairs to sit around the lovely fire pit. It's so much fun. It's great in the evening. You sit around, gab with your neighbors, and enjoy the fire pit. So let me go ahead and show you around La Casita. This is meant to be a really quaint and comfortable guest house for people who come up to the White Mountains and want to be out in nature and want to enjoy the local events and really just be out a lot. It does not have a kitchen. Instead, it has a mini fridge, some coffee and things like that. But it's really intended to just be a great place to be comfortable when you come and want to relax. Here's a lazy boy sofa sleeper, which pulls out. I have a couple little side tables you can use as well. Inside the ottoman is blankets and things like that. One of the things I really love about the casita before taking it into the bathroom is this beautiful wood ceiling. So we were really happy with the, the open feeling of such a small space, 12 by 12. So come on into the bathroom. So we have a mini refrigerator in here for you because I wanted a place to put my food if I had leftovers or just drinks or something like that. So we did go ahead and get a nice little mini refrigerator. Also, we have a Keurig here for our guests that like coffee. When you're in a tiny home and you're looking for how you're gonna store your clothes. So I have this little guy here and I have a larger one in Casa del Sol and it allows you to put like shirts, you do the Marie Kondo style thing, roll them up and plop them in here. And what's cool about it, just FYI, is it goes like this and zips up and it, you carry it with a handle. It's super awesome for traveling. When you go to sleep at night, obviously you're gonna bring the Lazy Boy sofa sleeper out 
and you're going to need your pillows and your comforter and your sheets and they're all ready here have a little ladder here a little short stool for people to step up and just grab that down another thing i really like is this beautiful little cabinet here you see how it has mirrors isn't that cool wine glasses and cups and here's some creamer and sugar and you can put things in there if you like as well when you're staying so i really love this little storage space as well this is a very large shower for this small space and I often hear people say, wow, I'm impressed. So this was La Casita. Let's go on into Casa del Sol. Welcome to Casa del Sol. So one of the things that I really thought about with building Casa del Sol from ground up was the amount of square footage that was important to me. So I have owned numerous homes in San Diego over the years, anywhere from 2,300 square feet all the way down to lily pad, 270 square feet with the lofts. I was trying to find what the square footage was that really fit perfectly for me. So I feel like I have found that with Casa del Sol. Casa del Sol is 360 square feet, 10 feet wide, 36 feet long. My goal was to make sure that you felt the space from one end to the next end. So it felt bigger than 360 square feet. So I'm standing in the kitchen area. So I chose a galley kitchen. And of course I wanted to have some beautiful touches so i was super thrilled when i found this and i called the builder i said you have to go buy it right now <laughs> it's gonna run out and another little touch that i wanted to have was this beautiful little backsplash it actually matches the door in the bathroom i think it's important that you have a sink that moves around in a tiny home so that you really can optimize your sink space as well because it's a smaller sink i have a full size refrigerator and look at Look at how spacious this, this is. You know, and you just keep this all organized too. <laughs> and we also have a full size stove and oven and microwave, which is really wonderful. This is an electric stove. So one of the things that I thought about when I realized I was gonna have less counter space, cause let's face it, this is not a lot of counter space, is I did get a rolling kitchen island. It actually is multi-purposed. I use it as a storage, I use it as a place that I could sit and work if I wanted, but I can also roll it right in here. And then I have this huge space in which to use my Instapots. <laughs> if anybody has Instapots, you know they're not totally small. I have an Instapot air fryer and I have a regular Instapot. So you gotta get creative in tiny homes. If you're going to design a certain way, you just kind of think functionally, how am I going to function well and not feel like I'm missing out on something that's really important. One of the great finds that I super love and get comments on all the time is this barista style table. I got at Ashley's in Sholo, just a few minutes away. These stools that go up and down so you can, I can sit here on my computer and I can work, so it can be a little office space too. And then eat here as well. I just love this table. So here's my beautiful front door. I had visioned for quite some time how I wanted my front door to be in contrast to the exterior of the home. I wanted something that was gonna pop. I wanted it to look kind of antique-ish. So I was telling my contractor guy and sending him pictures and saying this color paint. And so this is actually a, at least a six step process for this door apparently. Apparently I chose the most uh, time consuming and expensive process, come to find out he told me at least six times. He's like brushing, sanding, painting, antiquing, and coating and all these different layers. But doesn't it look beautiful? <laughs> One of the things that I also got from Ashley's was this beautiful couch. I went all out and got this very large couch and I just love it. You got your footstool ottoman and it's just so cozy. 
And if you turn over to this side, you're going to see, I also got this from Ashley's as a floor model, this beautiful electric fireplace, which I absolutely love. One of the most talked about features in this home is the fan. People just love this fan. And I have to say, I was a little worried <laughs> when I did my mood board on Canva and the house wasn't built yet. I picked out all these things to match each other and the fan, it's large. <laughs> I was like, oh no, did I buy a fan that's just gonna completely dwarf my tiny home? But it worked out. <laughs> so living in the mountains where we don't have very many stores here, Big Lots has become one of my favorite stores. I never even frequented it when I'm in California. One of my favorite purchases are these lovely little tables that, by the way, there are two of these in the La Casita. Here's two, there's two more, and my friend even got two. And I decided, and these tables are just, so you can actually sit if you wanted to, and you could eat. You don't, and so in the Casita, this is what you can do. You don't need to have a table, you can sit here and you can eat. And they're super light, and they're just super easy to put together. This is kind of funny, because you have to have a place for your dog toys, right? I got this at Ross. You know, you get these little bins at Ross, toys, yarns, collar. So my goal with Lilypad, I wanted to create this, again, as a Libra, anybody who's into astrology, it's very much about beauty and aesthetics and comforts and, you know, it's just something that really fills your heart and soul. Very much warm filling. I wanted to create a space that was 100% mine. It was a sanctuary. It was like, I felt just like, you know, like a cocoon. I, for a year, stayed there. Kind of healed my soul. I don't know if that makes sense to y'all, but kind of healed my soul, like reconnected and got away from the hubbub and the busyness and, and the city and just and the traffic and the too many people. And so Lilypad was my sanctuary for a year and I had no plans to rent her whatsoever when I created her. And I realized I was gonna rent that I could share her with others. And if I was able to attract some of those people that it could really do the same for them, I would be super happy. <laughs> so that's how that came about. One way to create privacy between the living room and the bedroom is with these beautiful barn doors. So they, they slide close. One of the things I am going to do to help with a little bit of privacy is just put a little bit of a film across here just to sort of block the view. But you know what? I never use them because I just love the open space, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so now we're gonna walk into the bedroom, which is also my exercise room, which is also where I can sit and work if I want. There's a table on the other side of this that pops up. So one of the reasons why I went with a Murphy bed and a rolling cart is one, I needed more storage space because remember with the kitchen, I elected to have the open floor plan so I really did need more storage and so that way if you take a look here you can see oh there's my instapot air fryer there's my instapot yay <laughs> computers all my places for paperwork and things that you don't realize in a tiny home you have to have place for so I needed more storage so in order to do the storage cart I needed to have a Murphy bed which also gives me this wonderful exercise room, which I've, I don't even have this much space in any of the other homes for exercise that I've had. But I wanna show you, just for sake of showing you, how it comes down. I would slip with my footies, my little slippies on, so I'm gonna take those off. Grab both these. This is a queen bed. Another really wonderful feature to put in a tiny home is blinds that go up and down because it brings the light in and it also provides privacy. I had that in lily pad, these very same ones, and I fell in love with them because I could see the sky, the moon, the stars, and yet I had some privacy. And so I got the exact same ones. <laughs> We're gonna go into the bathroom next, but before we do, notice another barn door.
door. So this is how you get your privacy between the bedroom and the bathroom. Come on in. So here's the bathroom and one of the things about tiny homes and bathrooms I find is interesting is that your choice of space usage is really important. Typically speaking, this is 10 feet wide, right? And whereas lily pad is eight and a half, you get to choose where, where you want to use your space in the bathroom. So in here, I actually have a smaller shower than La Casita. And lily pad, as I said, had a full size bath. However, this is still a good size for a shower. And the reason for that is because I have a full size washer and dryer. That is also a game changer. <laughs> So I gave up a little bit of, like, instead of a tub, I chose to go this route. And as I mentioned in the kitchen, the epoxy coated feature, you know, think about it, those regular white hollow doors in here. I came in and I said, uh, no, <laughs> that's not gonna work for my Libra eye and luxury taste. So he said, let me epoxy coat it. Look at how it's got these beautiful little blue features, um, which were purposeful too, to match the flooring and other features in the house. So storage is king in tiny homes, as we all well know. And so you're constantly looking at how you can get all your belongings in your house. It's always about how you can make more space. A couple other ways to manage your space in your tiny have a cute little basket with some dirty clothes are inside and a pillow on top, it's decorative. Another thing, tall spaces are of high demand in tiny homes. I have my hanging vacuum cleaner, full-size vacuum cleaner, ladder, my yoga mat, ironing board, all fit right back there. So really, really important to have some tall spaces to store things. Originally, because I wanted storage, the builder was going to put in just a regular vanity sink kind of thing. And actually it was gonna be this really pretty on top sink and I was it was gonna be really pretty, right, sitting on top with the butcher block. However, <laughs> that wasn't going to work. When, it, when they brought the vanity in and set it down, the plumber, two plumbers, two different days came to me and said, Debbie, are you really sure about that vanity? And I was like, I need my storage, right? And they said it again. And so he finally said, come take a look. He came and he sat down and he had about an inch between the toilet and the vanity. It wasn't going to work. So the builder was gone. So we kind of made an executive decision while he was out of town to find a pedestal sink. I had to give up my storage, but my contractor gave me extra storage, shelves in the closet as well as up on top. So I designed Casa del Sol really for me, just like I did with Lilypad, the way that I would like to live and what would nurture me and what would bring me joy. And now, like Lilypad, I'm also going to get to be able to share Casa del Sol with other people as well who, one, love tiny homes, maybe they wanna try out a tiny home, they're thinking of a tiny home, or maybe they just want a getaway vacation trip to the mountains. And the reason why I created these homes in a place where I can come and visit and I can come and stay as well as I can rent that is so that I can be more mobile. I can stay in California half the time. I can be here half the time. And I'm still earning an income and I'm also getting to share this beautiful space with other people. So my vision is kind of, it's unfolding. This is a really good revenue stream for me, right? So Lilypad, she's already, you know, like 2,000 a month for me. That's a really good rental income for Lilypad. And then the, the guest house, I mean, easily is gonna be another grand or so, you know, and then Casa del Sol is gonna be, you know, more than all that. I think it's important to, to be able to produce, like be part of a positive movement and also to take care of yourself financially in the world you know and so it's kind of just a win-win I'm taking what makes my heart sing and which is designing beautiful homes and tiny homes I love and and creating spaces for people to come and experience joy um, in, in a world that isn't always joyful <laughs>
for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.